Hello and welcome back to IoT Innovation. I'm Chris Hare and today we're going to be talking about memory and the lack of memory and also the industrial IoT memory market. We're joined today by SanDisk. This episode of IoT Innovation is sponsored by Anritsu. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Hi, and welcome back to IoT Innovation. I'm Chris Hare, and I'm joined today by Martin Booth, um, who heads marketing for the OEM business at SanDisk. So Martin, first of all, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your role at SanDisk, and, and maybe in IoT, maybe begin to elaborate on how uh, you and SanDisk are starting to see the IoT, the consumer IoT industry evolve um, as, as, it's, as it's been growing so quickly over the last couple of years. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I, I'm responsible for marketing for actually our automotive and industrial product families at SanDisk. So that's part of the OEM division. I think in the last decade or so, we saw a rapid growth of connected devices that consumers or workers use like PCs, and then it became smartphones and tablets. And those are generating a lot of data um, that is being consumed maybe locally, but also stored up in the cloud. Um, and now we're seeing in the next decade or so projections of billions more devices connected to the internet. And these are gonna be things that we see in the office, in the factory, in, a, in our everyday environments. Um, and as you add intelligence to those devices, uh, there's, a, there's a growing demand for semiconductors, including the memory content there to uh, make those things intelligent, to store local data and to process local data. So, so one of the areas that we've looked at with, with this uh, series of programs is the fact that uh, when you have voice traffic, if you have a stutter or a brief pause, it's not a big deal. Clearly, when you're talking about data traffic and the IoT always connected situation, we, we really can't tolerate to the same degree dropped calls because a dropped call is losing lots of data. Um, I imagine this is an area where SanDisk sees a lot of activity on the storage, the local storage side, uh, both from an industrial side and also rolling into consumer business. Um, is that driving a lot of activity within your business? Yeah, so I think if, if it is always connected and always on and relying on a 100% perfect connection, there's not enough bandwidth in the world to serve all of the devices that are connected all at the same time. I mean, I think we've all seen that right? if everybody tries to get on to streaming video at seven o'clock on a Friday evening, things tend to stutter and slow down. Um, and that's a big problem. So one of the things that flash memory can solve is something called edge storage, um, where we actually buffer data both coming into the device or going out of the device locally in the device um, which can help you manage the, the utilization of bandwidth. And in fact, in some cases, reduce the utilization of bandwidth. So SanDisk has introduced uh, this week a family of industrial flash devices. Um, we have both SD cards and EMMC uh, embedded memory devices that are optimized for this sort of application. Okay, so, so maybe talk a little more about what industrial grade really means. I mean, from a consumer perspective, I'm very familiar with SanDisk and, and when I was at Sony, uh, we used a lot of your onboard and offboard memory in all of our mobile products. So I, I've got a, quite a degree of familiarity with, with the historic product families. I, I guess what I see from a, as a consumer perspective, having just come back from some travel, um, I'm relying on a, a higher grade of SanDisk memory for my camera, for my digital camera storage, because I want faster access time, I want improved reliability. Yeah. Um, it, how does that translate to industry? So, you know, consumer devices are a good starting point. SanDisk has over 25 years experience at developing managed storage solutions, and uh, we've enabled all kinds of industries in the last 25 years from MP3 players to digital photography to you know, the smartphone you hold in your hand today. Um, but industrial devices tend to have some specifications above and beyond what you need in a consumer device. For example, operating temperature is, is one area where industrial customers demand a wider range of operation. Um, 
devices may be outdoors, for example, and in a cold climate, you need to operate it down to minus 40 degrees centigrade. Um, the other thing that's different between consumer devices and industrial devices is the product life cycle. The typical design qualification and life cycle of a consumer device is maybe two years. Um, industrial customers have typically longer design in cycles, longer qualification cycles, and they want stability of the components that are going into those type of systems for much longer. Um, so that's another key difference on an industrial product line. We're offering um, a longer life cycle support for those types of customers. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's real reminiscent. I worked many years ago on some medical and some military products where they expected a 20 year life cycle, which was seriously a far cry from what I was dealing with on the mobile side where, you know, six months was a long time. Um, yeah. that, does, does that then present some challenges to your product family in terms of uh, not necessarily built in obsolescence, but design obsolescence of technology as things are moving so fast in, in semiconductor development? So, yeah, things are moving fast. Um, but I think also we, we're starting to see us reaching the limit of how quickly we can keep shrinking the device, making it faster. Um, so while that will continue going forwards with technologies like 3D memory, um, there, there will still be a big demand for existing type of devices that need to stay around in the market for, for a long time going forward. And so I think the rapid pace of change we've seen in the last 10 years, for example, is starting to slow down just because it's getting more expensive to produce the next generation. And it's getting harder to do that from a um, device physics point of view as well. So as far as user replaceable memory, does that mean we're stuck with the size of SD and micro SD for the foreseeable future? Are you uh, looking at other formats that, that are going to start driving um, improved or improved size standards or size utilization? How do you see it evolving, not just for SanDisk, but more broadly in, in memory? Yeah, so, so on the industrial side of the business, um, for people that want to put embedded memory in the system, Right. Uh, then the EMMC standard is what everybody is using today. And that's a standard that's been around for a long time. It's widely supported by the chipsets. Um, and it's, it's you know, sourced by a number of people in the industry. So that's appropriate for embedded designs. For user replaceable memory, for example, in a security camera, you might use a micro SD card to record local data. Um, and to save bandwidth, you might not be transmitting a full high definition stream. You might only be transmitting standard definition unless there's an incident, in which case you can transmit the full high def stream. Uh, micro SD or an SD card makes a perfect solution for that as well. Again, it's a standard that's been around for a long time. Um, the standard has evolved over time. Uh, for example, on SD now, for the highest performance uh, solutions, there's something called UHS-2, mm -hmm. which is uh, giving you triple the performance of uh, previous generation devices. Um, right now, that's typically in the uh, consumer product space. For industrial guys, they're looking for something that's stable, mature, um, and SD and micro SD are perfect for that type of application. Okay. Uh, talking about the industrial side, I mean, one of the aspects of this program over the last few weeks has been to try and tease out some of the more unusual use cases. So um, mm -hmm. maybe if, are there some examples you can give us of things that wouldn't naturally be thought of as an industrial use case for IoT that you can talk about? Yeah, so I, th I think the biggest trend in IoT is the fact that a lot of these devices just previously haven't been connected. Um, mm -hmm. And then once you once you start to be able to connect and control devices, there's a lot of different things you can do with them. Mm -hmm. uh, a, an example would be the light bulb in your house, right? In, in the past, that's just a dumb device. There's a switch on the wall, you turn it on, you turn it off. Right. Um, now we're starting to see devices come out that can actually be controlled from your smartphone or from an IoT gateway in the house. Um, that let you do that, not just in the house, but remotely. Um, that, of course, doesn't need a lot of memory. But then you move to the next step up, like a thermostat, for example. And those are starting to become smart, to become connected. The operating system to run the communication stack on that is starting to require memory in the range of gigabytes. You're then able to store data um, that you're collecting from the environment within the house um, and transmit that up to a, a server somewhere in the cloud analyze what's going on, um, optimize your electricity usage or your gas usage. 
Um, so there's a lot of value to the consumer once you start to be able to collect that data and uh, start doing data analytics on top of that. Um, the security camera was in another example I gave. You know, in the past, those were all analog connected to a television monitor. Maybe you had a DVR recording it. But today, all those cameras are becoming IP-based. Right. Um, you could certainly transmit the full stream all the time if you've got the bandwidth to do that. But more and more, um, we're seeing people have local storage in the camera um, for security and backup purposes, also to manage the bandwidth. Um, and then again, you add things like facial recognition and other data analytics on top of that. You can start to do all kinds of clever things with cameras that you couldn't do before. Yeah, certainly one of the one of the areas that, that my team are watching pretty closely right now is distributed computing and and exactly your point about um, light bulbs that were were not connected and now are uh, clearly as you start to connect light bulbs in the way that, that you can with, for example, the Philips Hue and you can switch it on and off remotely. Now that device knows where you are and additional sensors and intelligence can be added to those devices so that it knows where you are. It might be doing some local processing, uh, local storage of information, which of course requires some, some memory. Um, and then as you say, local, up, local processing before uploading or maybe local storage at, at uh, high definition, whether it be audio or video, that you may not want to uh, consume all your bandwidth uh, about. I mean, does, does this, what does this do for industrial and consumer security implications on the memory? I mean, we've talked over the last few weeks with Arm and a few other of the semiconductor companies that, that uh, chip, chipset-based security is kind of the next big gotcha that they're all exploring. Does, how does that translate to the memory industry? So, you know, security is, of course, a very important topic. Once you start connecting everything to the internet, you don't want the hackers to take control of that and, um, you know, have access to your house in one way or the other. Um, it's a system level problem, though, and has to be a system level solution. Right. In, in the memory itself, you don't necessarily have security built in. Um, an example of that would be a smart card that you use for banking, where you're taking the device to different terminals and you need the device to have a secure identification as you go to different terminals around the world. In, in the embedded device, you don't really have that same problem. The device is static, it's fixed. Um, the security has to be at the software level. It has to be using encryption technologies uh, in the, typically that's in the CPU, not in the memory. Okay. So, so, so building on the security question, I mean, one of the challenges that, that we had at Sony that is still prevalent across the industry is the amount of copycats. Uh, you know, when I used to go out to Beijing or Hong Kong, I could go to the markets and find, uh, you know, 200 versions of phones that we never built. Um, I know that's the case, certainly in memory, too. What, what, is, what challenges does this give you in terms of, of um, memory compatibility, standardization, and even uh, protection? Yeah, so I think for the industrial customers, they're looking for a... Um, stable supplier that has that can be a trusted partner uh, mm -hmm. with their design right uh, so you know sandisk has the advantage of vertical integration we've been doing this for more than 25 years we not only design the memory we design the controller that goes in there we design the firmware we assemble and test everything we can offer our partners a trusted solution um, that can add uh, intelligence and value to their systems um, so that's the primary thing that industrial customers are looking for. They're looking for support. They're looking for somebody that come and cons can come and consult with them on their usage models um, that also affect the type of memory device you want to choose in the, in the system. Okay, understood. So, so if you're looking as an industrial customer to integrate memory and, and to not only integrate it for now but for the next 20 years, how does how do you how do you uh, work that process, the technical and the commercial um, process with those customers? Because clearly, one of the aspects with the industrial IoT that we're seeing is, 20 years ago, you only really had wireless companies that cared about onboard or offboard memory. Today, basically, right. everybody is trying to build a device. Everyone's trying to build a system. Um, very few of them uh, completely understand the whole ecosystem. Uh, what does this do to your, your sales process or your education process? 
So I think first up, it opens up um, a whole different customer base from the traditional customer base for flash memory um, devices. So, you know, we, we use a network of distributors um, and salespeople around the world that can go engage with these type of customers and consult with them on the usage model for their device and what they're trying to achieve. And what, what NAND flash memory can offer is high density that will allow them to serve not only today's applications, but tomorrow's applications as well. Um, and it can offer a reliable long-term storage solution. Um, that will give them the performance they need um, for the type of application they're doing. In the industrial world, there's literally hundreds, if not thousands, of different applications, and everybody has a slightly different uh, requirement. Um, and so it really becomes a consultative selling approach on what the what the optimal solution is for their design. Yeah, we're, we're seeing that too. I mean, our team has actually started building in education as a line item in our project budgets just because getting everyone on the same page has become such a challenge as, uh, as, as everyone except wireless people is now playing with, with IoT. It's, it's, been, it's been quite a journey. Um, so maybe on a little bit more of a personal note, I mean, as you, as you look at the IoT industry in general, um, you know, what, what maybe as a, from a personal perspective, uh, what predictions can you make potentially of how this industry is developing? Uh, what do you see as the big trends that you are personally as well as professionally following? Uh, and, may, and maybe tell us a little bit about um, what surprised you most about maybe IoT devices that you never thought would be in your life and are now. Yeah, so I think the, um, the size of the market is still small today. There's a lot of discussion about it um, you know, in, in the press and within the user community. Um, people still haven't really figured out everything they can do with these types of devices and uh, the value on a lot of this stuff is really going to be in the data analytics uh, in, in the cloud once you've collected all the data from, from the different things out there. So, you know, I've seen projections as high as, you know, tens of billions of devices deployed by 2020. Yeah, um, I think Aaron certainly when you start thinking of all the things in your house or your office or your factory, you 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 can adding that up and start to coming up to numbers that are that are pretty close to that. So I think the opportunity out there is huge. People have to add processing, communications, and memory is a big part of the bomb. And I think Sandisk is well positioned with its industrial flash product portfolio to take advantage of that as we go forward. All right. So what toys are you carrying that you never thought you would be? Um, or, or operate you know, in your house, or you know, pick your example. But I'm interested. I'm always interested to know how IoT has become personal to to some of the people that we've been interviewing. Yeah, I mean, I think the the, the biggest thing right now is probably security cameras in the house that I can view from my smartphone what's happening if somebody rings the doorbell or uh, when I'm out and I'm out of the house. So for me personally, that's probably the the biggest step forward in the last couple of years. Um, it's, it's not an entirely new technology, but I think it's become a lot easier to use. And, you know, the mainstream service providers are starting to deploy that at a reasonable monthly cost. So that's one area where I think uh, it'll affect a lot of consumers in the next few years going forward. Agreed. Okay, Martin, uh, let's leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Um, thanks for joining me. So today we've been speaking with Martin Booth, um, Head of the marketing team at SanDisk related to industrial and automotive products. Uh, thanks again for joining me and I look forward to catching up with you sometime soon. Yeah, Chris, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. IoT Innovation is a production of RCR TV. To reach Chris Hare or suggest a show topic for IoT Innovation, you can reach Chris at cbh at ntete.com. To find out more about IoT innovation and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.